Hello and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Hofdahl. And today we're talking about a film festival we went to last week called Renegade. <laughs> the last time we were on a trip together um, pre-pandemic was to that festival. Yeah, so it was it was very fun. I feel bad saying it was very fun because I know that your travel situation getting there was not fun. And you were delayed a lot, but once you got there, it was really fun. Yeah, no, it was, it was great. (laughs) And I realized I've had very few travel hiccups in my life, like in general, Yeah, very few things have gone wrong. So I guess it was just time. I guess it was your turn. Um, But Atlanta was lovely and it was in Marietta to be specific and it was unseasonably warm. Yeah, we lucked out. It was very warm and I love the architecture there and I can see why they do a lot of filming there um, because especially in that area where the theater, the Strand Theater is, it's just a very cozy um, square. It's very, I don't know, it's very like aesthetically pleasing. I love it. Yeah, it almost feels like a fake town, like like a back lot or something because it's just so everything's picturesque and, and cute. It's all surrounding that square that has like the park and the little like little play train and everything. Yeah, it does feel it does feel fake. So it's no surprise when we were there on Sunday and there was a farmer's market set up. We thought it was real at first. Yeah, but they were actually filming a Chris Evans movie. (laughs) And then Chris Evans was there and he married both of us. Yeah. So, so that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> we're not doing this anymore. We're both we're gonna married. we're gonna go live off that Captain America money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, part of that part of that sentence that I said was not true. Yeah. But okay, speaking of this film festival, it uh, is a genre festival. It was formerly known as the Women in Horror Film Festival, and we got to see so many awesome movies there were tons of blocks of all different types of horror there was a a southern comfort one where it was just specifically people from the south there was a sci-fi horror block there was even ones for that young people made uh 17 and under so yeah I think it's really cool everything and what was the other oh oh, what was the other block psychological oh yeah um supernatural I think it so keeps many. saying on Zoom that I'm raising my hand, but I'm literally just drinking tea. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to like raise my hand while you're talking. No, that's fine. Um, I, yeah. So we got to enjoy so many fun movies and, and I know like, well, if you're listening to this, you're a horror fan. I mean, I was going to say for non-horror fans out there asking how can horror be fun, but it is. Yeah. I, I think we're preaching to the choir. Yeah, I think Um, if you don't like horror movies, like I think you might have taken a wrong turn. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, like, okay, here's my question for you, because you have been curating the horror block for um, North by North Film Festival. What is it about short form that you like opposed to a long form obviously you know we all love a 90 minute two hour horror movie but like what about short films do you think is special I think like you probably have said with writing or reading short stories it's just a nice little bite it's it's an idea that has a beginning middle and end fully formed in such a short period of time it blows your mind. Like well done shorts are so refreshing and enjoyable because it's like, wow, I just got my mind blown in three minutes. Yes. As as opposed to three hours. No offense to the new Batman movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it. (laughs) It was, it was three hours long. That's for sure. Yeah. So, Um, you know, it's like, if you can tell a story in that amount of time, do it. I love it. Yeah, me too. And like I've always said about the short horror stories is like you're able to kind of explore characters that maybe you wouldn't want to like watch for two hours or situations where it's like you don't need all that time to you know 
create this world. You just have that, that little bit. And yeah, I agree. I, I like the short form. I mean, I, I think I'm appreciating it more now. I think even going to Renegade and, um, and I'm sure you doing your, your work, you're appreciating it more now. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's not something that um, we used to seek out, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm going to watch some horror shorts. We just, cause you know, where would we have watched them or yeah, I don't know. But now of course we've got a plethora of options. And speaking of which, if you are a horror filmmaker or any kind of filmmaker for that matter, you still have time to submit. The deadline is next Wednesday, March 23rd. And, um, it's North by North international film festival. So submit submit your work. I want to see it. Um, two, okay. Two amazing things that we got to do at this festival is, um, Heather Lane camp was there for her, uh, latest short film that she did. Of course, the name of it completely escapes me. Is it, was it? No, gosh, darn it. Um, anyway, but she was there and she talked about it and did a Q and a, and I thought that was really interesting. Um, it was a really short sort of sci-fi short horror film. There was no dialogue, which I thought was really cool. They really used the silence and the sound very effectively. And um, she was there and she got to talk about the process. And, you know, she talked about actually um, comparing it to um, doing Nightmare on Elm Street franchise and stuff. So I thought that was really cool. And she's just a queen and it was really cool to see her talk. Oh, I agree. And she talked about, um, you know, the process and um, how even she came to be a part of it is that she felt like they, the writers gave her a good pitch, which, you know, yeah, writers out there learn to pitch. I know. Right. Okay. Okay. Maybe we need to pitch something to Heather Lane camp. We just have to do it right. She really liked, there was kind of an environmental element to the story. And yeah. um, it, she also said, since she was, she's from Oklahoma, which I didn't realize um, she, uh, and they were filming it there, that that was appealing to her as well. So um, I'm literally I, trying to find the, the name of it. Yeah, right it's one word I and know. I can't think, it's something about like being thirsty, like parched, but not that. <laughs> Ugh. I am, I'm That's feeling, so- I'm just scrolling. Wait. Anyway, dang it. I, I um, we also got to watch a movie we've already seen. Uh, well, I've seen it a couple times. I think you probably have too. We saw Freaky and Michael Kennedy did a Q&A afterwards. And that was amazing. That was my, his Q&A was my absolute favorite part. Um, it was amazing. And I I really felt like he just had some, I don't know, he had some wisdom to drop. I think as a horror writer, I was very much like enthralled by kind of how he came into the business, how he wrote Freaky. Um, I think he was, you know, he was talking about being gay and how that informed him, like creating um, the gay character in the film. So I don't know. I just, I really liked watching him talk and he's just really funny. Meg, sorry to interrupt your thought here, but I think you have a ghost because now you've been giving thumbs up on the screen this entire time. What are you doing? And I just heard my dad, my dad just came in unannounced and, or I hope so because um, the toilet just flushed. So (laughs) (laughs) something is happening. I'm haunted. What it says I'm giving thumbs up. Yeah, it keeps showing a thumbs up on your screen. I, I mean, I talk with my hands, I guess. But that, it, that doesn't do anything. You have to physically push a button. What is happening? I don't know. It's Hello? interesting. So yeah, something kinda. that Michael Kennedy mm-hmm. said um, that made us, like it was a light bulb moment because we, we've never heard anybody say this before. He just really liked Happy Death Day. And he's like, how can I rip it off (laughs) and make my own version? And he said he Googled comedies and the first one that popped up was Freaky Friday. And he's like, I'm going to do Happy Death Day meets Freaky Friday. And he did. I know, you know, they always say like, even with book writing that you should be like taking like this meets this or whatever um, to describe your book. 
but I never really like started from that way like where it's like I'm gonna do this meets this um so actually I don't know I kind of like that idea I like it too and and it does it feels I mean it feels wrong because we're like we have to be original we can't yeah be derivative but hey apparently this is the way the world works (laughs) I know and I mean yeah freaky obviously I mean is based on we know what it's based on but it feels very original and fresh. So I guess it's all about your spin and um, making it yours. And like, you know, I guess it's okay to rip off. (laughs) Yeah. No, I, your way. Yeah. I freaking love it. And um, it's, it's so endearing and it's, especially it's portrayal of um, Vince Vaughn's character as the bliss field butcher. And now he's um, you know, this girl is in uh, swap bodies it's just yeah. so it's like it's funny but it's touching and it's real and it's honest and so much is said just with a few shots or just a few choice lines it's so well written yes it is and the audience was it was a really good audience um I had never got to see it in the theater so that was fun and you know it's nice when you're kind of surrounded by film people because I felt like people asked really good questions as well yeah. um they were all very like thoughtful questions and I think he answered them all thoughtful as well so that was one of those things that you know you kind of go to see the movies but then it's kind of like the interactions with filmmakers and fans as well as the Q&A's and stuff like that that's what's really fun and unique. Speaking of Q&A's if you're in the Twin Cities area next Wednesday that's important for two reasons first of all it's the deadline for to submit to my (laughs) film festival but it's also the day that we're going to be uh, presenting a secret movie at the imagine willow creek theater in plymouth minnesota get your tickets and see us there you don't you won't know what the movie is till it starts rolling and we'll do a q a after i'm really excited um i'm smiling really hard because this is just fun like this is the best part of life like getting to do a secret movie I know and to like present it I know I mean I'm very excited (laughs) it's gonna be fun and uh we've got we've got some people coming some friends coming so get your tickets did you get your ticket yet for your husband Meg no (laughs) oh boy (laughs) you know (laughs) it'll be fine it'll be fine I'll get it right after I get off this that's what I'm gonna do okay um what else was something I gonna say oh yes about Renegade it was also so nice to meet fellow writers filmmakers mm-hmm. other artists interact with people we got to meet some uh fans of our books who we didn't yeah. know existed and we got to sign some books so you know let's just keep going let's connect friends yeah I mean especially after everything we've all been through the last couple years I think you know now's the time to to get out there if you're feeling safe and you're being healthy and now's the time like get out there and I don't want to use the word network but get out there and and party (laughs) meet people that's better yeah meet people have fun well I don't I don't think we're going to rank anything right no, because you know we saw a bunch of movies we're gonna we can rank the the fun the experience yeah, I, well it was 10 out of 10 well obviously <laughs> and we and ate so much good food I was gonna say we ate a lot of good food we drank a lot of good drinks I got my gore horror hat which I'm very proud of you got some great evil dead merch yeah and uh one of the best things ever was we got a bottle of champagne for $15 at a brunch <laughs> like and what it came in a bucket and with the juice and we had mimosas and it was just like I would do that that's I think I think that's heaven I like think I think to- get, and don't you think you would get a bottle of champagne and orange juice I think so like yeah, yeah. It was great. It was great. And, and then uh, that weekend rolled right into my spring break. So it was, it was nice. I didn't, I didn't have to rush home, um, but I I did come home the next day and it was, it was a lovely, 
I won't say week off because I did a lot of work, but you know, I didn't have <laughs> yeah. to go anywhere. Well, that matters. Yeah. Stay in your PJs. That's what I say. Yes. So wherever you are, we hope you are doing well. Spring is around the corner. Daylight savings time happened. We lost that hours that hour of sleep, but man, it was light out last night. Did you notice how light out oh, it was? You know, really, I, I, it makes me feel good. Like it makes me feel like I want to go drink champagne outside. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I just suck champagne. <laughs> I just saw somebody a TikTok. Somebody said like daylight savings. It makes me want to day drink. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Oh, we don't recommend that friends, but we do recommend going out, getting some vitamin D naturally or a supplement, and we'll see you in the horror section. (laughs) Bye.